everybody. Welcome back into the Colored Gemstone Academy. I am your instructor, Paul DC, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Now, as always, if you have not yet subscribed, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It's easy to do and it's also free. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it allows me to keep doing these lessons for you for free. Well, this week's lesson is about Uveravite Garnet. It is the last of the three calcium members of the Garnet family of gemstones. Now, if you take a look at the original chart that I showed you in the episode 48, which was Garnet 101, you're going to see the three calcium members of the Garnet family. The last of them on the bottom is Uveravite. The other two, as you can see, are the Androdite and the Grossular Garnet. But now let me show you another chart. You're going to see a yellow box that indicates in the Androdite, Androdite Garnet family, you're going to see that there are three color varieties of Androdite Garnet. I put a yellow box around that. As we go to the next chart, this uh, yellow box indicates the six different color varieties of the grossular garnet, which was in last week's lesson. All right, okay, I get it. So <laughs> it doesn't really look like a box. Um, in fact, it looks horrible. I had to draw it freehand. I didn't have anything on my computer that could do the line around <laughs> things. So I did it freehand and it looks horrible, which indicates why I do gems and not art. Anyway, this third chart shows that there is only one variety of the Uveravite garnets and it only comes in one color, green. Uveravite is truly one of a kind and it is in a class literally all by itself. Now once again we go through what I like to call the vital statistics and some of this might sound familiar to you because we've been doing garnet for the last couple of episodes but there are slight differences in each of these varieties of garnets that you have to pay atten attention to but what you need to know that is going to be consistent is number one, it's a birthstone for the month of January. If you're born in January, garnet is your birthstone and, and your birthday doesn't care which variety of garnet it is. Also, if you're celebrating wedding anniversaries, the garnet, the uveravite, or the almondine, or the pyrope, or any of them, is going to be the stone for the second wedding anniversary. So a great way to celebrate there. If you are into the signs of the zodiac, the, it is the uh, zodiac sign for Aquarius. So uh, garnet is appropriate for all of you Aquarians, and that's from January 21st to February 21st. Now the, chem the chemical composition, remember this is what makes a gem a gem. This is how you identify one gem from being one thing and another gem from being another thing. So the chemical composition is a calcium chromium silicate. In other words, like a lot of the uh, calcium members, they're a calcium silicate gemstone, but very, very rich in chrome. And remember, chrome is what makes an emerald an emerald. Chrome is what makes chrome diopside that beautiful green color. Crystal structure is cubic. And again, that runs consistent throughout all of the garnet family of gemstones. And then we get into the hardness of a gemstone. Now remember, hardness is a measurement that says what gem will scratch another gem. They rate them 1 through 10. There's a lot of numbers really in between. But the lowest being 1 would be talc, the highest being 10, which would be a diamond. Well, this comes in at between 6.5 to 7.5, which is reasonably good on the hardness scale. I put that in the kind of the same family of quartz, which is a 7 out of 10 on the most hardness scale. Another indicator, an indicator of the durability of a gemstone is the toughness, and that's the measurement of how tenacious it is. Will it crack or crumble uh, or chip? Well, diamonds actually are rated very, very poor on toughness. In this case, this would be called fair to good on the toughness scale, pretty good for every si single day wear uh, as well. There's going to be one slight variation to that when I get into the discussion of smaller crystals that are creating a bigger stone, uh, which we call druzy. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Refractive index. Now this is the measurement of the sparkle of a gemstone. Again, I always compare this against the diamond, which is 2.4, I think it's 2.42. I keep saying, I need to look it up. I keep saying, I think it's 2.42. Uh, the other higher ones like a zircon can be in the 1.97. 1.96 range, 
the highest generally for colored gemstones that aren't diamonds. But this one is very quite high. The refractive index on the Uverovite garnet is 1.865, a little bit more sparkly than some of its other garnet counterparts. Specific gravity, that's when we're talking about the heft of a gemstone. How heavy does it feel compared to the weight that it is? If you had something in your hand like an amber, it can be really big, but not have a very high spe specific gravity. It's about 1, 1.06. Uh, whereas you put the Uverovite garnet, it is between 3.77 and 3.81, which puts it very, very close to the heft of a sapphire or a ruby. So Uverovite garnet is among the rarest of all of the garnet group of gemstones. It's, it's comprised of very, very well-defined but very small crystals and almost like what looks like druzy little crystals on another piece of gemstone. Uh, for those of you that don't, didn't, uh, aren't familiar with druzy, like this is a, this is a piece of druzy, a druzy gemstone that I sold on the air a little dolphin with a blue jersey. Uh, I also did this for the Tucson Gem Show one year where we offered a jersey cactus pen and you can see how it sparkles. Well, what is jersey? Jersey is, if you take a look at agates, agates are really solid like this, but sometimes there's a hole, a void in the stone. And when that happens, Mother Nature loves to fill that void and tiny, I'm not sure you can see it. I'll try and put it closer. See that little sparkle in there? Those are little tinier crystals that grew on top of the agate. That's what Jersey is. Jersey is not defined as a specific gemstones. It's more of a phenomenon. So where did the name Uverovite come from? It's not the easiest one to pronounce. It was first discovered in 1832 by Germain Henri Hess, who named it after Count Sergei Semenovich Uverov. And he was uh, alive from 1765 to 1855. So he was a Russian statesman and amateur mineral collector. And uh, now the, that's the guy it was named after. Hess, who's the guy that discovered it. And if that name sounds a little bit familiar to you, turns out he was a Swiss-Russian chemist and doctor who formulated Hess's Law, which was an early principle of thermochemistry. I didn't think so. I didn't know that either. When I first heard the name Hess, I thought, well, maybe it's like the gas, the Hess gas stations, or more importantly, nearer and dearer to my heart, the Hess Select Cabernet uh, wine that I enjoy so much. So no, I'm not familiar with thermochemistry, but Hess had nothing to do with the wine or the gas stations, but he came up with the Hess's law. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. All right, maybe not so much. Uh, so where does it come from? Where do they find this stone and why is it so rare? Well, most of the, the um, most famous crystals of the Verovite garnet came from a place called Autokumpu, Finland. So it has also been found in Europe in Norway, Italy, Spain, Russia, South Africa, and Botswana. In Asia, it has also been found in Taiwan, and it has been found in Japan. And also, if you're familiar with the land down under called Australia, it has been found in some quantities in Australia, basically in New South Wales, maybe a little bit of Queensland. As for the United States, Uverovite has been found in mainly, mainly, mainly kind of the more Western states where there's a lot of copper. So it will be New Mexico, Arizona, California, and then out of the blue, <laughs> out of the blue and into the green, um, it has been found in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, not far from where I used to work when I was with QVC. As I mentioned earlier, Uverovite crystals tend to be very small and are most often seen in juicy like crystals or juicy, juicy looking jewelry. Even a shot like this beautiful crystal on your screen looks like it's a massive piece, but it's actually under intense magnification. You're going to find that most of the crystal specimens that might look like either a beautiful emerald or a chrome diopside are going to be in the neighborhood, the vast majority, probably about a one millimeter, which is not very big. Um, 
There's a reason for that. Remember I said this is a gemstone that is rich in chrome. And remember I told you there's an, a, an upside and a downside to chrome. Chrome is what supplies that spectacular color. Some of the most beautiful gemstones in the world are the color they are because of that chrome. The downside of chrome as a trace element is it tends to inhibit the growth of the crystal. That's why you don't see very many very large uh, chrome diopsides or even emeralds. You, you can't get as many big emeralds as you perhaps would see in an aquamarine or another member like morganite of the barrel family. You'll even notice in this particular photo that I'm showing you, I want you to notice how bright and brightly green the smaller crystals are. And as they go up in size, in the same picture, you can see they're getting progressively darker. And if you get a really big crystal, or even some of the rough that I'm about to show you, it comes out almost as black. Now this is undeniably not a, a, a gemstone you're gonna find everywhere. It's gonna be very difficult to find. It's gonna be more probably in a rock shop or maybe uh, you know, exclusively for col collectors. Uh, personally, I would not spend a lot of money for something like that because as I said, you have an alternative for things like Druzy, especially with the chemical vapor deposition. You can have colors that would replicate an emerald uh, or a uveravite garnet for a much, much smaller price. But I wanted you to understand it is among the rarest of those garnet species of gemstones. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's lesson of uveravite garnet. We have but one lesson left in our garnet mini series, and that's gonna be next week. And I'm gonna cover, I, I told you all the different varieties of the garnet. Now there's two varieties of garnet that are a combination of varieties of garnet. So we're gonna to get to that next week. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please hit the subscribe if you haven't done so already and share it with your friends if you like, because I'd like to keep growing this so that I can keep doing these lessons for you. Remember every single Saturday morning at 10 a.m. is when we drop, Eastern Time United States, is when we drop a new gem lesson. And then on Wednesdays, we have our questions and answer series. I'll see you on next week. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.